Our next presenter is uh, Erin Offal, and Erin is from Muscatine High School, Muscatine. Mm -hmm. She's the daughter of uh, Natalie and Craig Offal, and her title of her presentation is Middle Schools Ma Matters. Please welcome Erin. feeling dumb, not being supported, wondering where your next meal is coming from, not having a stable home life, and so much more. For these students, this leads to problems later in life and issues in school, such as low grades, attendance and behavior issues, and often, often dropping out of school. In fact, according to Johns Hopkins University, for students attending school less than 80% of the time, failing math or English, or receiving an unsatisfactory behavioral reform in a core course, there is a 75% chance that they will drop out of high school. This doesn't mean that these students don't want a future. Even students in the most dire of circumstances want a future. This just means that these students need to be provided a path to that future, a way to find their own comfort system. My program, Middle School Matters, feeds on that by providing average students with the means they need to be successful. And it is my goal to explain the purpose of this project here to you. Herbert Hoover once said, children are our most valuable resource. I want to show you how I plan to mold that resource into gold. In creating Middle School Matters, I decided to focus on three main things. The first was academics. I will focus on I have focused on academics by providing students with after school help to work on their homework, a mentor who can help them with their academic endeavors, and by working with their teachers. I focused on academics by making sure that students are attending school. And then the last thing is rewards. I want to reward the students for their effort in the classroom and with their attendance. I will do this quarterly. And then these rewards will then turn into academic stimulating field trips. I chose Middle School Matters for the Muscatine Community School District based on a few reasons. First is that Muscatine High School has had a consistently high dropout rate. In 2014, Muscatine High School had a dropout rate of 2.85% and the state average dropout rate was 2.7%. And in 2014, Muscatine High School graduated 81.79% of their students compared to the 90.05% state average. I also chose this program based on research done by Johns Hopkins University, which says that sixth grade is the most crucial year in deciding whether a student will drop out. This, this program will also be beneficial for not only the students, but for the school district, as it will provide is it will help them with at-risk students by providing them with the help that they need. In order to create this program, I, did, I used three main steps. Planning, implementing, and long-term success. The first step was planning. I started with the planning process by giving presentations to gain support and help for the program. I gave a presentation to the Central Middle School staff to recruit teacher volunteers and to explain to them what was coming. I also gave a presentation to the local Kiwanis chapter to recruit volunteers and gain financial help. <coughs> the next step was soliciting funds. I started by creating a budget of $1,500, and then I emailed and contacted local businesses to gain support and help. I received $500 from Kent Corporation and Muscatine, and $500 from h and and I'm still working on soliciting funds. 
Next, I worked on finding mentors and students for the program. I started by contacting seven parents and received six students from the program. The final parent that I contacted told me after I had given her my little spiel that I was incredibly creepy and that she did not believe anything I was saying. <laughs> this taught me adaptability skills and it also taught me that I'm not going to be able to have everybody believe what I'm saying and that I just need to be okay with it. After I solicited the students, I worked on finding mentors for all of these students. I had four boys and two girls, so I wanted to find mentors that would correlate with them. Over the span of two months, I contacted 20 plus people and asked them to be mentors. At the end of this time, I only received four mentors, though I later received a fifth from the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. This also taught me adaptability, as I spoke to experts in the field, and they told me that boys actually work better in groups anyway, so I decided to double up and give two boys one mentor. Next, I worked on recruiting volunteers. I contacted the local United Way and Big Brothers Big Sisters program. It was through the Big Brothers Big Sisters program that I received my fifth mentor, as I learned that one of my students in the program already had a big brother who was willing to come in and help with the program. I also talked to the National Honor Society at Muscatine High School and worked on receiving student volunteers. The next part, for the next part of the planning process, I had meetings. I met with a local tutoring center in Muscatine High School called the Flickinger Center. They focused on elementary school kids, and it was there that I bounced off ideas and recruited volunteers for the program. I also met with the Central Middle School 6th grade counselor to ask him to be my supervisor and to watch over the students during the day. I also met with the Central Middle School principal to bounce off ideas, explain the program, work on getting background checks for the mentors and the volunteers, and to work on soliciting a meeting place. I also met with the superintendent of the school district to work on getting the materials I needed for the program. Finally, I met with the mentors of the program to create a schedule for the year and to explain their responsibilities. The second stage of the program was implementing. The most important part of the implementing process was the start. Before the program even started, I wanted to have a picnic so that way that Students and the mentors could get to know each other before the work started. I also wanted the parents to get to meet the mentors. I wanted to have everyone in one place at one time, and I wanted there to be fun before the real work started. Before the week of the picnic, I called each parent twice and sent multiple text messages. I received RSVPs for 40 people, but only 20 people showed. I had a ton of extra food to go around, so I decided to donate this extra food to the local homeless shelter, MCSA. The first week of the program went pretty smoothly. For the first few days, four out of the six students showed, and by the end of the week I had a fifth student, and by the next week I had all six students. The only issues I had with the first week is I had volunteers cancel on me last minute. This also taught me adaptability, and I learned that my mentors <coughs> are amazing, and that they would, they're willing to come in whenever I need them. The next step of the implementing process focused on mentor responsibility. Mentors will be expected to help the students in all their academic endeavors, focusing on a few things. The first is grades. Mentors will check the students' grades through an online grading school app called PowerSchool. They will also be expected to communicate with teachers to make sure the students are turning all their work in on time. They will also help the students after school with homework and with study tips. Mentors will also be expected to check the student's attendance. They will also do this through the grading app PowerSchool. Mentors will also communicate with teachers for attendance, as attendance applies to not only just showing up for the day, but being active in the classroom as well. Mentors will also be expected to build a connection with their students, at, so that way the students can feel comfortable with them and know that they can come to them for anything. The next portion of the implementing process focused on after school goals. Students meet after school four days a week from 3.30 to 4.30. During, at the after school program, students have time to play games in between school and the mentoring program. This gives them time to relax and a little bit of a break. The games also help the students to bond with not only each other but with their mentors. I have also provided students with snacks every day after school so that they are able to work on a full stomach. The most important part of the after-school goal, goals focuses on homework. 
I have focused on homework by bringing in volunteers who are sufficient in every subject area so that way the students always have people that they can rely on to help them with their homework. The next part of the implementing process focuses on rewards. Rewards are kept active throughout the school year and are cumulative among all students to create a team spirit. Students will receive a point for every day they attend school and five points for every week. Students will also receive points for their grades. They will receive more points for A's than B's, B's than C's, and so on. These will be calculated quarterly. These rewards will then turn into great academic opportunities for the students. They will range from small to big and will be things such as college visits or visiting a workplace. The third step of the program is long-term success. I will focus on gaining long-term success by getting feedback from teachers and mentors quarterly. I will also ask students to fill out forms to see what ideas they have for the program. For the next few years, I have set aside reliable juniors to take over my role and help with the volunteers. I have also asked Nan Nash the Muscatine chapter of National Honor Society to help the students with the volunteers. I have also asked the tutoring program I mentioned earlier, the Flickinger <coughs> Center, to integrate this into their long-range goal. Eventually, I would like this program to help reduce the dropout rate at Muscatine High School and I would like the dropout rate to even be better than the state average. I hope to extend this program to the 7th and 8th grade at Central Middle School by adding new 6th grade students each year and keeping the current ones in the program. I also hope to extend this to the other middle school at Central, in, in Muscatine, West Middle School, and then to the high school. In conclusion, Middle School Matters is the perfect program for the Muscatine Community School District as it can help to reduce the dropout rate Provides at -risk and provides at-risk students with the means they need to be successful. I have done this, I have created this program through three steps, planning by clearly defining program goals, implementation, putting goals into practice, and long-term success, where I will extend the program and keep kids in school. My hope is that this program will provide students with the comfort system they need to be successful. Thank you. So, uh, this is really interesting. It seems like the mentors have a really important role. I'm wondering, how do you support them? How do you keep them from burning out, say? What's the time? What, I know the per week time commitment. Are they committed for the whole school year or a semester? Or, and how do you keep them engaged and enthused? So, the mentors are going to be in the program for the whole school year. And I had thought about previously, I previously thought about that when I was deciding who the mentors would be, so I made sure that I got, for the most part, retired teachers, so they're already used to this program in the first place, and they have a lot of time just to devote to this as well. Um, mentors are only required to come in once a week, although I've had mentors come in the whole week, multiple days in the week. This is to make sure so that they aren't getting tired of their individual student or they don't feel obligated to be there every day. And this will kind of help them throughout the year so they don't burn out, he said. What types of approvals did you need from the school in order to start this, this process? The main thing was the Central Middle School principal. So when I first thought of this idea around March, early March, I had, I've had a pretty good connection with my, I went to Central Middle School, we had a pretty good connection. I loved him as a principal, so I, I set him aside and I asked him, do you think that this is something that will work? And we kind of pounded out the details of this program and he was the main approval that I needed. And then that uh, presentation that I gave to the whole Central Middle School staff was to get their approval too, and that was basically all I needed. But I also met with the superintendent, like I said, to make sure that he was on board with this program. And I met with the Flickinger Center, the tutoring program, because they were the experts in this, and I wanted to see if they thought that this was something that could proceed as well. Uh, Aaron, uh, I'm a little surprised that the school system didn't have a program like this. Uh, 
Is this the first such program that the system has had? This is the first program that the Muscatine, high, or the Muscatine Community School District has set up. There is the Big Brothers Big Sisters program and the Flickinger Center, but um, the Flickinger Center is mostly focused on elementary schools, and there's things like peer tutoring programs and enrichment programs, which is a lunchtime where students go in at the high school and they work on their studies with their teachers, but there hasn't been anything specifically designed for sixth grade students in middle school. Have you noticed improvement among the students that were mentored? Well, this is the only the third, this, is, this coming week is only going to be the third week of the program, so there hasn't been really enough time for that to be developed, but I can definitely see the kids becoming more comfortable because they started to get a little bit more <laughs> snarky with me and seeing what they can try to get away with. They sometimes forget that I'm in high school and I know all their tricks, but there I've, I've seen them build connections at this time and I, I hope that there will be improvement throughout the year. So. How much flexibility do you have in expanding this? So if a student um, needed to come in mid or semester, would you be able to accommodate that, for example? Yeah, I've already had discussions about that. I am very open to any students coming in. It would take a little bit to get mentors, but like I mentioned previously, I learned that boys at least work better in groups. So I would just ask one of my mentors to double up for the time being until I found the new student, a mentor for his or herself. Uh, one, one last question. Obviously the program starts a small, you've got a small number of kids because you want to sort of pilot it out and see how it works. But if your goal is to actually impact uh, the rate of dropout, it seems like you'd have to eventually incorporate a larger number of kids. Are there any plans for a follow-up on this or an expansion of this over time? Yes, I, for the next year, I have talked with the juniors that I've set aside to take over this program. Next year, we are hoping to do 10 plus <coughs> students in the sixth grade year and eventually just keep building that number once this program gets more publicity around the school district and we're able to gain more mentors. And like I said, the, the Flickinger Center, the tutoring program in Muscatine has a, a great arsenal for those, <coughs> for those type of things. And in my meeting with them, they had mentioned that this is part of their long-range goal anyway. So hopefully this will be integrated as part of both the Flickinger Center and the school district, and then it'll be able to come become this big thing. So you'd hope that it actually might be taken over by Flickinger at some point? Mm -hmm. I would like there to still be a lot of student involvement with it, but it'll be a lot easier when, I ha when there's kind of a parent organization who is able to donate or to solicit all of their time to this because right now the school district has so many other things going on. This has really just been my project. My, my goal is to get as many people in on it, this as possible so that we, there'll be, it'll be easier to get funds, it'll be easier to get volunteers for the program, and hopefully the whole process will just become smoother. When you do get to a point where you're ready to seek some feedback on it, can you give me some examples of the type of feedback that you would be inquiring about what what would be important to you to know what's working what's not and, and who would you involve in that feedback yeah so i can give you an example of something that's already happened actually so i originally had the program going from 3 30 to 5 o'clock but my mentors had pulled me aside and they said i this is not working sixth grade students do not have this much homework they get antsy by the end of the day i think we should shorten it so that would be the kind of things that i'm looking for in my feedback not only that but well, I would look at statistics as well. I would look to see how the students' grades are going up compared to the previous quarters, how their attendance is improving. I would talk to all the teachers of the program, the principal to see what kind of changes he's seen, the counselor that I mentioned, uh, his name's Mr. Moth, and the, the mentors and the students as well. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron.